Okay. Um, and, and I, you're probably going to hear me say the AA word a bunch of times today, but affirmative action, and just just this whole concept of people do, having a, doing an affirmative approach to having equal opportunity, as opposed to laying back and seeing what the rules say. Mm-hmm. Um, I thank you, um, um, President Walker, for telling us about the Fresno program, mm-hmm. because you have to do something unique. If you follow the traditional rules and regulations of how to hire, you will never hire. And you have to go out of the box kind of thinking. Um, But what bothers me in government is we get so attached to the rules that we don't get out of the box and we don't look at some of the things um, that that you can do. Um, And and I want to also thank uh, Secretary Batcher um, for when I heard about racism in Department of General Services, she, she got to my office right there. But it should have never come to our, gotten to our attention. It should not have risen to, to a level where a state senator and assembly person has to get involved. There should be things. But I think it's because we're following the rules. And like I tell most people, um, there's this thing called passive-aggressive racism. It's mm-hmm. passive because they just follow the rules and let things. But it's aggressive racism because the outcomes further and debilitate a group even more so and i'm not afraid of the i'll just say it, the donald trumps of the world they may say things that are pretty racist i'm more afraid of the ones that hide in plain sight um, and most races aren't dumb they're very smart they know how to hide what they're doing and how they're doing and keeping debilitating people and so um, this whole thing of upward mobility within the system uh, talking to employees in different departments, um, especially minority employees. Uh, I've never met a larger group of people that feel, that feel like they're, there's no hope and that they're being pushed down and that there's no one there providing them an opportunity to relieve themselves, tell what's going on. Even when I try to pull those individuals out in general services, say, give me names, let's go talk to people. They were scared to death about further retaliation, whether it's open or or in, in hidden. And so um, we've got to find a way um, to think out of the box on how we can get um, um, disadvantaged folk up through the ranks mm-hmm. and, and provide them opportunities. And we can't. We can't become a slave to we follow step one, two, three, and four. So that tells me I'm no longer a racist anymore. We've got to do more than that. And we've got to ferret out those people that hide behind these rules. Otherwise, um, we will not get our numbers. We'll never get our numbers. And we're going to look up, and I'm sensitive to it. I can tell you um, Ms. Waldron is very sensitive to it, and, and Mr. Bonta. Um, we're 12-year-olds. We're not, we don't have six-year terms like the six-year-olds. We have 12-year-olds. In 10 years, we will be here mm-hmm. right. to deal with whatever it will look like. And so we want to get ahead of this right now um, to ensure that um, um, we do have that workforce that, that's representative of the state. And so it, it may be more for you, Ms. Walker, um, because you deal with the one-on-one with the employees. Um, and it looks like you're, you're looking at and maybe um, from the Department of Human Resources, Ms., Mr. Gillahan. We can't do things traditionally anymore. And are we, are we coming up with out-of-the-box kind of thinking on how to uh, move people up the ladder or bring people in? You know, we had somebody earlier talk about bilingual. Um, I love the Fresno idea, going through the churches. But that, you can't, that's not in any civil service book, okay? And so you're not going to find it there. Uh, and then lastly... It is the individual who's in charge of the recruiting. It's in the individuals in charge of the hiring. Um, not to put this young man on blast, but the first young man from the LAO's office, um, I asked about getting data. And God bless him, he gave me a bureaucratic answer. <laughs> I'm going to call it a bureaucratic answer. And, he just not, and I'll just say, he just may not have been ready for prime time. He may not have been ready to be at this because anybody knows if an elected official asks you for information, you don't tell them. I'll get you the email address, and you look it up yourself. Get you the link. I'll get you the link. 
um, <laughs> and, and just may not be ready for prime time. But what I do know, if I'm going to have the LAO do some research, he may be one of those passive aggressive pre people who's not, he's not racist. It's just that he's following the rules that produce the wrong outcome. And I would not have him work on any EEO assignment because he either doesn't give a damn or it's just not in his repertoire to get past that. And I think that's what happens in a lot of government positions, that you have people that are just kind of following along, making sure they don't step out of line, and not willing to take the risk to ensure that we have um, a, a diverse work group. So I know that was a lot, but. I, I just want to say, in fairness to uh, the representative from the LAO, and I did cringe when he told you to get the link, but I think it might have had more to do with the generational thing. <laughs> I mean, they don't think anything about saying go to the link. That's what people do. They Google everything. Um, Fair and enough. That, <laughs> and that's why it is important. Let me make, That's why it is important to have conversations in departments all the time about organizational equity and inclusion because some things that might be automatic for me, you're going to perceive it in a different way. And if we don't know what that universe looks like, we don't have an opportunity to change the conversation. I'll also add that my understanding is that uh, the data that was being referred to was not LAO data but CalHR data. Just to clarify. If I could, in, in response to uh, Assemblymember John Sawyer's uh, a request for data. We're happy to bring the data to you and sit down and have a discussion about it um, uh, and and where we can be better about providing data or capture data in a different way. We're certainly open to um, input on that as well. With respect to hiding behind the status quo, I, I would just note that, that that is exactly what the Civil Service Improvement Project is intended to fix. It's intended to think outside the box. It's intended to challenge us to find new ways to be more effective and better about the things that we all agree we need to do. And so um, otherwise, why are we doing it? Right. It's yeah. a lot easier to hide behind the status quo than actually do the work. So uh, th that's our commitment to from this project. Um, it is a, a huge investment of resources, um, both from our, 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 our little team that, that launched this as well as all the departments that are staffing it. And we, we're doing it at the same time we have to do all the production work that we do to run state HR. Um, but that's our commitment to making this a better state. And, and as I said before in other testimony, the things we're doing today will be gone by the time it really pays off. We're not doing it for our legacies. We're doing it for the benefit of the state of California because if we don't start today, we're never going to be somewhere better tomorrow. And that's our only motivation in this effort. So and I'll leave my comments at that. Thank you. I want to thank all three of our presenters on this panel. Thank you very much. And I want to invite our final panel up to present d discussing the topic of review of state workforce and succession planning. We have John Billington, Audit Principal, State Auditor's Office. Katrina Hagen, Deputy Director of Operations, Department of Human Resources, and Cassandra Licknock, Chief Operating Officer, Cal Sturz. Welcome and thank you for being here. Mr. Billington, whenever you're ready. Uh, good morning, Chairman Bonta, members. I'm John Billington with the State Auditor's Office. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity today to share with you the results of an audit we conducted and completed a few months ago regarding workforce and succession planning in California government agencies. In this audit, we evaluated guidance that the California Department of Human Resources provides to state departments regarding workforce and succession plans, and we also evaluated the status of these plans for three departments, the Office of Emergency Services, the Department of Social Services, and the Department of Transportation. As we noted in our 2009 high-risk audit report regarding human resources management, it is critical for state agencies to engage in workforce and succession planning when they are at risk of losing large proportions of their workforce to retirement. That's already been brought up a few times today. Just to reiterate, uh, the proportion of California state employees age 50 or older has increased from 23% in 1988 to 41% this year. Um, at the three departments that we looked at, 
uh, OES and Caltrans indicated that over half of their employees are age 50 or older, and at social services, almost half of their workforce is at that age or over. Currently, state departments are not required to develop workforce to succession plans, and no state agency has expressed statutory authority for uh, overseeing those efforts across state government. Although CalHR does not have such authority, it has developed uh, resources to aid state departments in their planning efforts. However, during our recent audit, uh, we did determine that it has missed some opportunities to strengthen the workforce and succession plan of some, some departments it has worked with. And it has not adequately assessed the usefulness of the guidance that it provides to state departments to um, improve its efforts overall. For the departments uh, whose plans we reviewed, uh, all three have initiated activities to address uh, the risk posed by upcoming retirements. However, all three need to do more to assess the department-wide effects of those uh, planning activities so they can adjust their plans as necessary. In 2014, CalHR performed an evaluation of the workforce and succession plans of the five departments we raised concerns about uh, on this issue in our 2009 high-risk audit report and CalHR provided recommendations to the departments to strengthen their plans. However, in our most recent audit, we found that CalHR provided incomplete recommendations to the departments. Specifically, uh, using CalHR's own evaluation tool to identify whether departments' plans contain certain best practices, we found that CalHR failed to identify missing best practice in six of the 12 instances where a plan lacked a specific best practice. Um, thus missing opportunities to recommend improvements in the department's plans. Uh, given the subject of this hearing, I would also note that four of the five departments' workforce plans did include a best practice of addressing human capital challenges such as the demographic makeup and diversity of senior leadership. Um, also, CalHR has not taken adequate steps to measure the effectiveness of the assistance and resources it, it, sources it provides state departments. Uh, for example, in July 2014, CalHR conducted a survey of 80 departments concerning their workforce and succession plans and, the use, and their use and opinion of CalHR's tools and resources. CalHR received responses from only 21 of the 80 departments, and some of these respondents indicated that they did not have workforce and succession plans and they had not used CalHR's tools. However, the survey did not have questions to determine why that was the case. Because of the small number of department responses and the lack of follow-up question, CalHR lacked information that could have assisted it in improving the tools and resources that it makes available to state departments. Uh, finally, regarding CalHR, we also noted that in mid-2013, uh, it began gathering workforce and succession plans from all state departments to determine whether there were consistent weaknesses in the plans. However, according to CalHR records, as of February 2015, it had contacted only 25 of the 88 departments uh, it intended to contact and had collected plans from only 8 of those 25. The other 17 did not have completed plans at that time. Consequently, as of February this year, it is unknown whether almost three-quarters of the departments CalHR plan to contact have plans or not. Regarding our review of the, the plans for uh, Cal OES, Social Services, and Caltrans, we noted that although all three departments have initiated many of their workforce and succession planning efforts, all three departments could do more to assess the department-wide effect of those efforts. For example, the departments could measure key indicators, including changes in retirement patterns and staff movement into leadership positions. Without doing a more robust, robust assessment of their planning efforts, uh, departments are limited in their ability to determine whether their planning activities are working as intended and whether, and whether they might need to adjust their plans. Management from the three departments agreed that they need to do more to assess, uh, for assessing the effectiveness of their plans. Key recommendations we made in our report include that the legislature should consider amending state law to authorize CalHR to oversee workforce and succession planning efforts across all state departments and update the legislature annually on the status of those efforts. Also, we recommended that CalHR survey state departments at least biannually 
to determine how the departments perceive the effectiveness of the resources and tools CalHR makes available to them and should also periodically evaluate and update its workforce and succession planning materials. And finally, we recommended to the three departments we, whose plans we looked at, Cal OES, Caltrans, and Social Services, that they develop a process to annually measure and evaluate their workforce and succession planning activities and update their plans as necessary to ensure, ensure their activities are effective. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Katrina Hagen? Yes, thank you. Katie, please, only my mom calls me Katrina when she's bad about something. So um, good morning, Chairs Pan and Vonta, members of the committee. Uh, Katie Hagen, Deputy Director of Operations, CalHR. Thank you for this opportunity to present today on the important topic of workforce planning and succession planning. I've spent much of my 18 years in state service as a human resource practitioner focused on this very topic and have implemented strategic workforce and succession plans in three state agencies I have served in. It's a topic that I'm very passionate about. Um, I am especially excited today about the term out of box thinking that I heard about nine times. So I'm, I'm very energized to hear that term uh, spoken so frequently. Workforce planning, um, for those of you that may not be familiar with the process, is frequently defined as having a plan to ensure that you have the right people, the right number of people with the right skills in the right job at the right time. So it's a, it's a, it's a science around workforce planning. Succession planning, put simply, is a plan for preparing that bench of qualified candidates to fill critical vacancies that occur over time. We commonly refer to it as technical succession planning for um, various levels in state government, and we refer to um, executive succession planning for leadership uh, planning. Though the definitions of these uh, of succession and workforce planning seem simple and straightforward, workforce planning can be a challenge in any sector, whether it's private or public. There are many considerations when conducting workforce planning. We've talked about many of those today. Recruiting a diverse candidate pool that is reflective of the diversity of the people that we serve in California is a significant consideration in workforce planning. Developing and retaining cognitive diversity in the workplace is another workforce planning consideration. We're faced with an unprecedented skill gap in the, in the many sectors. We're in a strong economy, which means it's difficult to recruit and compete with other employers. To help state civil service employers, CalHR provides assistance in departments for developing workforce and succession plans by providing step-by-step -step practice, uh, best practice models, as well as providing consultative services. We welcome the state auditor's report, recognizing through the audit and from feedback from our customers that we have a critical need to improve in this area. Like many state agencies, workforce planning had not been a priority of CalHR or DPA for many years. And we're in the process of building out this function so we can better serve our departments. CalHR is on a schedule to implement the state auditor's recommendations within the timeframes outlined in the report. We are confident that by improving the tools that we provide to the departments, marketing our services more broadly, and identifying strategies to underscore how critical it is to departments, missions to develop those plans, we believe will make significant headway in expanding the number of departments with effective workforce plans. I like the terms proactive approach today and having the will. That's really the key, is ex explaining to leadership throughout state government how important workforce planning is uh, to their organizations. A few examples of initiatives currently underway today at CalHR um, and with, in partnership with GovOps and Department of Finance and the State Personnel Board. We're working with department stakeholders and a civil service improvement project team to update our current seven-step model, workforce planning model, and five, to a five-step model that is consistent with industry best practices. This new model will also clearly show additional steps required for succession planning, which is typically one strategy, a part of a workforce plan. 
Among the tools and templates CalHR provides to departments, we also provide guidance and resources relative to recruitment and retention strategies, mentoring and other professional development strategies, knowledge transfer strategies, and considerations of generations in the workplace. We also highlight best practice examples of State Department workforce and succession plans on our website. We continue to collect workforce and succession plans from departments to better understand where they need assistance in implementing those plans. We will continue to provide constructive feedback and guidance to the departments. To that end, CalHR has created an evaluation tool to evaluate departments' workforce plans. This tool is available now online, and departments can also use this uh, to self-assess their own plans. CalHR is uh, also partnering with another CSI team to develop an improved process for collecting, evaluating, and reporting on the status of all department plans. This is another example of how we are leveraging our customers' feedback to provide improved services. Thank you again for this opportunity to address this very important issue, and I'm happy to address any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Hagan. Ms. Licknock. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Chair Bonta, Chair Pan. My name is Cassandra Licknock, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at CalSTRS. I'm excited to be here because I really love this topic and the content of the presentations today. Um, at CalSTRS, I've been heavily involved in the development of and execution of our workforce and succession plans. And I want to speak to what we've done at CalSTRS and why we think it's successful and why we think it um, aligns with a lot of the recommendations in the State Auditor's uh, report. First, its importance must be acknowledged and um, uh, recognized at the highest levels of the organization. At CalSTRS, this happens with the Teachers Retirement Board. It is included as part of their strategic plan. Recognizing employees as a highly valuable asset is not just jargon. Investing in staff for success in their current roles as well as their future roles is essential for operational efficiency. It's an obligation as a good employer. At CalSTRS, we want to see a return on our investment in staff to ensure the continuity of business operations. And to do this, we use a number of different methods. We have a dedicated unit that oversees and manages the workforce succession plan activities and their metrics. We operate using competency-based performance and development for staff. We have core competencies included in every job description in the organization. And for supervisors and managers, we've expanded those competencies and have bridged them from the executive level down through the frontline manager so that the staff can see what competencies and behaviors they need to um, uh, develop to move into higher roles. These competencies are included in performance evaluations for every position, so we have competency-based performance evaluations. And we construct training curriculum to develop and uh, improve upon those competencies. The goal is, is to prepare CalSTRS workforce to be fully competent and competitive, because we're in a competitive environment, for those positions that become available, whether it be through retirement or normal turnover. We track our employee demographics in a number of areas. We look at our retirement risk. We want to look at the population that is of normal retirement age, the number of service. We want to see populations where there's a retirement risk in the organization. We look at our turnover rate. We look at voluntary turnover rate, our involuntary turnover rate, our retirement turnover rate. We look at internal promotions versus external hires. Are we doing a good job um, hiring candidates or developing candidates for um, opportunities internally, or are we looking to the outside for um, pockets of uh, uh, competencies that aren't in, in the organization as it currently sits? We track our training and development st uh, statistics, and we look at our performance evaluation analytics. We track how many performance evaluations are completed. We hold our supervisors accountable, and we look at where there's improvements of um, competencies, improvement needed in some of those competencies. We have a formal onboarding program that includes seven course components, and I'm just going to list a few of them. Um, the most important one is our new employee orientation called Welcome Aboard. It's a full-day new employee orientation that our CEO and executive staff spend a good deal of time introducing new employees to CalSTRS as an organization. We have other components that are included in it that are important to um, express to the employees as they're coming on board. We have core value trainings for new, employee, uh, new employees, which really sets the tone of the culture of CalSTRS. 
because it's a top priority in the organization, we have mandatory accountability and internal controls training so that every staff person coming on recognizes that they have a role in carrying out accountability and internal controls in the organization. We measure engagement um, through biannual surveys. We have a remarkable response rate. Our last biannual survey, um, res uh, the response rate was 86%. Employee engagement is more than employee satisfaction. You may um, recognize <laughs> this term already. It's an emotional connection to the organization. It demonstrates the discretionary effort employees um, will go above and beyond what is normally required in the position. Our employee engagement score in the last survey was 55% employees engaged. It was very high for an organization. We also focus on retention. How long are people staying? Are they staying for one year? Or, you know, if they're, if they're leaving within a year, maybe we have an onboarding problem. We look at the rookie ratio between two and five years. Are they coming to us, getting experience, getting the Calsters um, employment on their resume and looking for somebody else as their destination employer? We conduct exit surveys and exit interviews with every staff person that's willing to sit down and speak to um, one of our executives. We don't do this at, the, uh, at a, a staff person level. We, we want to demonstrate the importance of why they're, you know, uh, hearing why they're leaving. Maybe it's for opportunities um, elsewhere, and maybe it's because there's a management issue or a relationship issue within the organization. The good news is that over 60% of CalSTRS staff have been employed with us for over five years, so, but we do track those uh, metrics as we move along. We have an award-winning recognition program, um, and we track its, we measure its success and its utilization. We want to know, are people using it? What do they think about it? Um, it's, it's, there's seven different tiers of our employee recognition, and this is, goes into re employee retention engagement. We have created training academies that develop staff as they compete for higher levels within CalSTRS. So some examples of these are our pre-analyst academies. We have analyst academies. We have emerging leadership academies for those people that have been in um, analyst positions that want to start developing skills into the supervisory um, uh, positions. We have, of course, the 80 hours of required supervisory training, but then we go beyond and have a manager's academy that incorporates a lot of the higher level um, competencies for the organization. We have a master series for those supervisors and managers to start developing skills when they want to start developing uh, competencies for com com uh, competing into senior leadership roles. And then most recently, we just completed an executive development program, which was an 18-month um, program that was developed specifically to address the high number of staff that were eligible to retire at our executive level. That was very successful. It was an application process. We had 15 participants, executive fellows. And as the retirements did occur over the last few years, three of those uh, participants did move into um, the executive roles in the organization. We did hire, um, we did have an external hire because, of course, it's a competitive process, and we want to make sure that we're looking for those specific competencies um, needed for that particular role. But some of those um, individuals, we had 15 participants. We didn't, we weren't going to have, and nor do we have 15 executives. Um, but uh, they were developed and achieved executive positions at other um, organizations within the state, which is still a win. We've developed our candidate pool, and they have had some career fulfillment for themselves, which. I think is really important when you're looking at succession planning. We have ongoing training and communication avenues through regular leadership forums, and then we have town hall, regular town hall meetings with all staff in the organization. As an extension of our workforce and succession planning, our recruitment efforts are based on attracting a diverse workforce and broadening the candidate pool. We attend career and diversity-based events. We conduct targeted recruitment at colleges that specialize in degrees for our hard-to-fill positions. We develop outreach programs with professional organizations aimed to attract diversity in financial organizations such as the Robert Twigo Foundation, Association of Asian American Investment Managers, the New America Alliance. Recognizing recruitment channels need to change as gener generational demographics change, we've developed a calsters.com career site. We recruit through social media by posting targeted recruitment on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Monster.com, CareerBuilder, YouTube, Dice.com for IT classifications. We have a whole host of um, uh, uh, networks that we look to, and we're going to be going on to Pinterest. We deploy social media blasts to support our outreach and recruitment e events. Um, we've, we, we've created video shorts when attending career events and post them on our social um, uh, social network sites to um, advertise for those. We've created a CalSTRS recruitment video that I um, have included in the packet that we've handed out. 
and a recruitment um, outreach brochure for um, the events that we attend. So I put together those two things, and al along with some of the metrics that we do catalog um, in the organization, we we track a lot of things. And I could, there's no way I could speak to them. It would take a, take the full another full hour, and would fill up three or four of those pages. Um, but with that, I would want to thank you again for the opportunity to present, and I would be happy to answer any questions.